Hello class, welcome back. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I know kind of tough times right now. Hopefully you're healthy. Hopefully your family's healthy. Um, but I'm just going to jump right in here. Um, for those participating in the uh, the online you know, learning opportunities, thank you for that. Um, if you haven't had a chance to do that, maybe you should try out some of those Google Forms I've been sending out or some of the, the web addresses and different activities you can be doing. Um, but we're going to jump right into it today. Um, I'm going to continue with the same format for the next, you know, foreseeable future where I do a couple videos a week where, or some activities, opportunities a week where, you know, I do one Sunday night, Monday morning, um, you know, one, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll submit a different type of activity. And then Friday, we go kind of go through some answers. So this is part three. We're going to go through some answers from the Google form. And the topic we're still in is radicals and roots. And then um, the goal here is to be simplifying terms. So the words that I'm going to be using here are radicals, radical signs, um, radicands, and index numbers. Those are going to be the numbers I'm going to, or the vocab terms I'm going to use a lot here. So if if that confuses you a little bit, uh, just let me know, um, and you know, an email or text me, and I'll try to walk you through something. I got about 11 problems picked out here. We're just going to kind of go through the Google form that I submitted on you know Sunday night, Monday morning. So right now, uh, let's jump right into it. So the square root of 27. Uh, this is a square root, so the index number is a 2, so we're looking for pairs of numbers. So 27 is 3 times 9, and then if you break down 9 even further, that is 3 times 3. So that's breaking down this as far as you can. You can rearrange the order if you want, but I'm looking for pairs. That's what the that little index number tells me. Well, I have a pair of threes. It doesn't matter which pair you pick up, but I do have one pair. So you kick one out and you cross one out. That's how it works with these pairs. So one's going to go to the outside and one disappears. Well, there was in that radical, there was still one three that I never circled. It was that one. So that just sticks around. That just stays in the radical. And this is your answer. Now, the square root of 27, if you actually type that in a calculator, it's like 5.196 or something like that. That is the same answer this would give you. It's the same number on a calculator. Um, it's just it's just written differently. This is the exact answer versus a decimal approximation because the calculator is approximating it. It's rounding off. All right, so that's kind of the idea of what we're doing, but we're going to be doing this for much, much harder problems as we go. So uh, let's jump right into the, this next one here. I'll switch up the colors as we go. Uh, so we have the square root of 125. So we're going to break this down. Again, we're looking for in, index number two. So pairs of numbers. So 125 is 25 times 5 times x times x, and then breaking down 25 even further, that is 5 times 5, and times x times x. And so it looks like I have a couple pairs of numbers here, because again, my index number is still a 2. So I'm going to kick one of the 5s out, one of the x's out. So there's a 5 and x on the outside, those are multiplied together. And then on the inside, the only thing I didn't circle was the 5, and that just sticks around. This is your exact answer. That's the, the answer I'm looking for in the final the final part of this. So that's simplified version of a square root for that one. Uh, next one, same exact idea. Uh, I'll switch up the color again. Uh, but on this problem, you want to multiply these together first. So when you multiply these together, we're going to get 80 x squares. Uh, that's the first step. You can multiply. You can multiply any type of radical together as long as they're the same index number. So um, I'm going to multiply these together. I get 80x squared. And now I'm going to break these down. Now, maybe you're, you want to go back to 8 and 10. Maybe you're a person that wants to go like 4 times 20 times x times x. It doesn't really matter as long as that you're dealing with a radical here. Um, breaking down the 4 even further, that's 2 times 2. Breaking down 20, that's 4 times 5. Or maybe you're a 10 and 2 type of person. Um, I'm going to break down the 4 even further here. So that's 2 times 2. These are all multiplied together. Okay, so that's as far as I can go. That is, you know, the prime factorization of 80x squared. And it looks like I do have a couple pairs in here. So I have a couple pairs of 2s. I have a pair of x's. So I'm going to kick those out. And the 5 looks like it's left. So there's a 2 on the outside, another 2, and an x on the outside. And the 5 is left on the inside. That was the only one that didn't have a pair. And so this ends up being 4x root 5. So this is the idea of what we're, we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to look at, you know, what is the best way or fastest way to simplify radicals. I know there's different methods of doing this, but I thought this is kind of the easiest way to show it. All right, let's jump right into the next one. So now we're going to be dealing with sum and difference. So sum and difference, you can't just add and subtract straight across. You have to break them down before you can attempt to add and subtract. So for 20, we did this one just a little bit ago. I'm going to break that down to 4 times 5. And then for the 6 root 5, 
that can't go anywhere because you can't break down root 5. I know 1 goes into it, but 1 goes into everything. So um, we're going to leave that one alone. Now the 4 root 5, I'm going to break down the 4 to be 2 times 2. And now I do have a pair of 2s, and so I can kick those out. So I have a 2 on the outside and a radical 5. And I have a 6 radical 5. So now we're at this point where we've simplified these down as far as we can. They do have the same radical, so you can add them. How you add them is you add the leading coefficients, the leading numbers out front. So this ends up being 8 radical 5s. That's how you add radicals together. They have to have the same radical for you to add them. If they're not the same, you can't do it. All right, let's jump right into the next one. Same exact idea, but I threw in variables here. So, breaking this down, I'm breaking down 63. That is 9 times 7 times x. And then breaking down 9, that's 3 times 3 times 7 times x. Okay? And then the 28, that is 4 times 7 times x. And then the 4 is 2 times 2 times 7 times x. All right, so that's as far as I can break down. Again, the minus sign is just stays in the middle here. All right, so... Um, we have pairs because, again, we're looking at square roots here. The next number on the outside is a 2. Uh, so I have a pair of 3s. I'm going to kick one of the 3s out. So I'm left with a 7x on the inside. Over here, I have a pair of 2s. I'm going to kick one of those out. That's how it always works. One goes out. And then the idea is that now we look. Yes, they have the same radical. So I can, I can add and subtract the leading number out front. So 3 minus 2, that is 1 radical 7x. And again, if you want to write this just as radical 7x, that's fine. It's the same thing. The 1 is out front on everything. So, All right. Let's jump right into the next one. We should be on problem number uh, 6 here. Um, so again, we're um, I just picked a problem. But on this one, I picked ones that had leading numbers out front. So this just to show you kind of what happens if there's already a number out front of the radical sign. All right. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to break down the square root of 12. So that's 4 times 3. And then break down the 4 in the inside, that's 2 times 2 times 3. All right. And so we have a pair of 2s here. When I kick it out, that's going to join the 2 on the outside, and it will multiply on. We always just multiply them on when you kick them out. And on the other side, on the, tw on the 75, I'm going to break that down to 25 times 3. And this breaks down to 5 times 5 times 3. And the 2 is just on the outside there. And I have a pair of 5, so I can kick that out. And that 5 will join the 2 on the outside and be multiplied on it. That's how it works. So this ends up being 8 radical 3 and a 10 radical 3, and they're being subtracted. So you just subtract the leading numbers out front. So this ends up being a negative 2 radical 3. Okay, so again, this is the idea when you add and subtract radicals, it's it's one of those things where you just have to like simplify them as far as you can, then you can try to subtract them if they have the same radical in the back. Uh, let's jump right into cube roots here. Um, so let's see, let's jump right into cube roots. All right, so let's see, for cube root, uh, 150. So I'm going to try to break this down. So cube root, we're looking for an index number of 3. So we're looking for 3 numbers in the inside that match. 150 is 25 times 6. And then breaking this down even further, 25 is 5 times 5, and 6 is 3 times 2. So it looks like I'm looking for an index number of 3. So I'm looking for triplets on the inside. There's no triplets. None. There's a pair of fives, but there's not a triplet of fives. So the idea is that on this one, there's nothing to kick out. So we go back to the original problem where you multiply all these terms together, and we're back to 150. And that is the simplified version. There's no way to simplify that because there's no triplets. So, you know, I could have done this with square roots, but I, I chose to do it with a cube root. Just so you can see it, like, it's not going to always simplify. Sometimes there's not a lot you can do. Uh, we didn't do any problems with uh, where there was lots of things left on the inside, but you just multiply them together. So that's the final answer. You can't do anything with it. So let's move on to uh, problem number eight here. So uh, we're doing cube roots. I'm going to multiply these together. So we'll do kind of a very similar situation here. I'm going to multiply these together. So because you can multiply any type of radical as long as they have the same index number. So this ends up being 48. And now I'm going to try to simplify this, see if there's any triplets on the inside. So 48, I can go back to 4 times uh, 4 times 12, or maybe you're a 16 and 3 type of person, but I'm going to go 4 times 12. Uh, breaking down the 4, that is 2 times 2. Breaking down the 12, that's 4 times 3. And breaking that down even further, that is 2 times 2 times 3. All right, so that's as far as I can go, breaking down the square root of 48. That's the prime factorization. There is a triplet of 2s in here. So again, when you have a triplet of 2s, you just kick one of them to the outside. And the things that are left are the things I didn't circle, which was the 2 and 3. And those will be multiplied together. So my final answer on this problem is 2 cube root of 6, because these two items multiplied together. 
and that's the final answer. It's the same answer as the square root of, or the cube root of 48, or the same thing as the cube roots of those two up above multiplied together. All right, uh, let's jump right into the next problem here. Okay, so in this problem, um, again, just like multiplying, you can divide anything you want together. So if I divide these two things out, I'm gonna switch up the color here. Um, I can divide these right away. They have the same you know, index number, it's index number four. 162 divided by two is 81. And then x to the fifth divided by x is x to the fourth. So it looks like in this problem, if you actually divide them, there's no radical anymore, or uh, there's no uh, fraction bar anymore. Um, so at this point, now I'm just gonna try to break these down and see if there's any fourth roots in here. So 81 is nine times nine. And then the x's, there's four x's there. And then the nines are three times three and three times three. And we have the four x's in the back. All right, and so we're on a fourth root, so we're looking for quadruplets of things. We'll have quadruplet of threes and quadruplet of x's, so I can kick those out. So it looks like there's a three and an x on the outside, and there's nothing left on the inside. There's nothing left in here, so that goes away, and your final answer is just three x. So that's, I mean, when you, when you simplify radicals and there's nothing left on the inside, there is no radical sign anymore. That's the exact answer of it. All right, moving on to the next one. So now cube roots with adding and subtracting. Um, I'm going to try to break these down. Um, so breaking down 24, that's 4 times 6, you go, you know, 2 times 12, or maybe you're a 3 times 8 type of person. Uh, then times x, and then times 3 y's here. That is a cube root. And then breaking down 4, that's 2 times 2. And breaking down 6, that's 2 times 3. x, and a y, and a y, and a y. All right, and we're looking for a cube root. So I do have a triplet of 2's, triplet of y's. Those go to the outside. And on the inside, I have a 3 and an x left over. Those are the only things that weren't triplets. And those stay in a cube root, not a square root. And in, then in the back, this minus sign stuck around. And back here, the y is on the outside, but for the 81, I'm going to break that down to 9 times 9 times x. And I'm looking, 9s are 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x. So that's bringing down the 9s. The y is just on the outside. And so I do have a triplet of threes, and that can join on the outside. So I'm left with a three and a y, the cube root, and on the inside there was a three and an x left over that wasn't circled. And so at the very end, to subtract these, they have to have the same radical. And these things actually do. They have the same variable, the same radical, so I can subtract them. You just subtract the leading coefficients. So if I subtract these, I get a negative one y cube root of three x. Now, if you want to write this as negative y cube root 3x, that's fine. It's the same answer. It's just when you subtract 2 minus 3, you get a negative 1. All right, last problem here, last, absolute last problem. Okay, so breaking these down, uh, the square root of 3 I can't do anything with. The cube root of 15, well, 15 is 3 times 5. There's no triplet in there, so I can't do anything with it, so it just multiplies back together. And I cannot add these two things together. They don't have the same radical. They're not even the same index number, so there's probably little to no chance that these were going to simplify. So this is just your final answer. It's just what you started with. All right, I know I threw kind of a range of problems at you. Um, on Sunday night or Monday morning, I'll submit out some more activities that we can try out throughout the week. I'll kind of stick with the same format. Hopefully you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your family, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.